Well, I mean, we've seen this uh, customer service, sales, and sounds like also in development yeah. that literally the, the senior level can use it because it gets them to, it gets, it gets their outcomes faster. They can actually do what they need to do. The question is long-term, what does that do to our entry level side and our mid level? Because we need to grow them. And it sounds like if we put more tools into the senior level, we might be atrophying mm -hmm. at some of the lower levels. What do you think? Not, I'm not just talking about smart recruiters. I'm saying just total general. landscape. Yeah. 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 I think people need to retain their curiosity, right? They cannot be just satisfied with the code that just got generated and just blindly using it. This is the most popular advice I'm getting. Um, people need to really uh, invest time in understanding what happened and get into the weeds of it and understand what's the underlying um, architecture or what are the decisions that the AI uh, assistant just made, right? And, mm -hmm. and this actually makes it super easy, right? You can, you can have a conversation with ChatGPT right now and really learn all of these topics. You don't have to just go through a thick books. You can have a chat and understand these concepts, right? So like, you know, uh, if you're junior entry level, it just, you know, lowers the, the bar, the entry bar for you to understand these concepts, right? Because like the explainability of it is, is getting better and better. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we've been hearing, and it was a huge buzzword five, five years ago, you go to any conference, everybody had AI. Everybody had AI. Now this is before Gen AI, right? Uh -huh. And then Gen AI comes and you guys see where the market's moving and you start to pull that into your product. Do you think those organizations who built AI early on, investment, uh -huh. that's good, that's good, but do you think they are now behind the eight ball because everybody else has j very fast AI yeah. and they didn't have to put all that, that money and sink all of that, that time into it? Yeah, I think this is just big equalizer, yeah. uh, right? Uh, you think, I'm thinking of like resume parsing. Uh, it was just a couple of companies doing this. They've built inside in-house models to just to understand resumes um, you know, in different formats, different languages. And it was just hard, very hard to do that, yes. right? Very heavy just, lift. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly, right? Now it's just, just happened to be significantly easier to do that, right? You have a, a, a bunch of new companies that are just able to do it super quick, right? So wow. they just leapfrog that uh, very quick. And it's just happening everywhere. Um, one other story, like what, what happened to us actually, um, a year ago, companies were buying um, GPT enter chat GPT enterprise, and they were like planting their GPTs and investing a lot of money to plug in their SaaS systems, knowledge base into these GPTs so uh -huh. that they can have a conversation about company-owned data. Right. We haven't done that. And I was like, shit, we should have done that, right? Uh, we're, we're, we're late in the game. But then we just partnered with Glean. And this is just company that does exactly that. They, it just connects to all of your SaaS systems that you have, gives you access to basically 4.0 model. You ha can have a conversation about it. And just happened like this, right? So, you know, you know I don't feel that, that loss anymore because we, we have access to just an amazing product that, that do it for us, right? Yeah. So that there's interesting dynamic here. So do you see that on the startup landscape? The startups are just going to explode just because of having access and availability to all these different models, not to mention the leapfrogging that's continuing yeah, to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them will die yeah. because folks like OpenAI will ship the, the new model that will basically solve their problem. Yeah. And, you know, in, in six months in, they will have, they'll be out of business, I think. Some of them will just see meteoric growth, right? They, they will be just growing like crazy. So, you know, um, I think we're going to see both dynamics happening. Yeah. yeah. So is that, is that a huge advantage for you to sit back and kind of watch the market and pick and choose yeah, the I, type of tech that you want to use moving forward? I just want to, yeah, I think I want to focus on first principles, right? So stay open, uh, just make sure we can pick and choose the tech that, that suits us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, predictions are hard and especially if we're talking about future, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I want to make sure that, you know, whatever will happen, we're going to be, we're going to have an easy way to, to consume it. Uh, I want to standardize the tech stack uh, so that, you know, we can build synergies and, and basically leverage these tools um, with a greater power. Mm -hmm. And also, like, I want to uh, 
feed these tools with the right data, right? So we've been, we were fortunate actually to be super distributed um, and remote. We had to write a lot of things. We had to document everything, right? Writing is, is a is super important skill for our company. The clarity of writing is important. And now it's just amazing because we have all these tools reading those written documents, right? So you can reason about them and search. So that's such a boost, right? And yet, this is yet another thing, right? Um, you probably heard it, um, that there's this, this saying that English is the, the hottest programming language of 2025. So basically, the most of the interactions that engineers and, and product people will, will do, or the more of them, will not be in programming languages, mm -hmm. just in English, right? So the clarity of your writing, the clarity of your thinking, it's going to be more and more critical because the more and more of a code will just get generated. Yeah. So, so we've heard in, we've heard in um, pretty much the press that Klarna, probably heard, heard of them. Yeah. The CEO believes that there's not going to be a job that AI can't do. And, and so they, and they've cut 400 customer service agents, yeah. right? After training their models and et cetera, et cetera. Um, do you think that's just bluster and it's just hyperbole? Or do you think that, I mean, again, we're, we're, we keep hearing recruiters are, are, you know, they're kind of scared that AI is going to take their job. And then you hear Klarna say, say something like that. Where do you think the truth actually lies? Uh, with Klarna, I don't know. That's uh, there's a bit of a play in that. Yeah. I think there's just like you know, I think saying this just to satisfy investors a little bit. Um, so you know, uh, they just want to be on the on the on the forefront of that. Uh, I don't know. It's hard. I think I would love to think that there is space for creativity. Well, like. Recruiters are so slammed with admin, with transactional work, mm -hmm. with all of that. They are so under-resourced, under, you know, they're crushed. I would love to think, you know, now they will have, they will shift, right? They will have more time to do, I don't know, like what Atlassian did when they were doing the campaign. We're going to steal your gigs. And then they rented a bus that went through the different cities in Europe. And they had three-day hiring events in the bus and they were stealing the best engineering talent from European um, cities and you transferring them into Australia and like that, right? So some recruiters in Atlassian just figure this out and run that campaign. So I would love to think they will have more time to do that, right? And actually, yeah. So Klarna, not so much. Being able to actually get the great talent who want to actually utilize AI to be able to do their job better. Because we keep hearing that AI is not going to take a recruiter's job. A recruiter who's using AI is going to take another recruiter's job. Yeah. It's a similar thing for engineers, for like most of these professions right now. Like uh -huh. you need to, and um, people are, are just constantly reminding, we are being constantly reminded that like we need to keep our skills sharp, really need to learn to leverage these tools. And there's something in it, right? There are, so, there are so many different techniques and ways of using these tools that are pretty unique. I mean, yeah, I, I got my engineers that are, I don't know, feeding. They're like setting up a panel discussion within ChatGPT. And they're like giving, you know, ChatGPT three different personas of famous architects, the software architects, and they let them just have a panel conversation. And they're using it to just open up their mind for a, a lot more possibilities of how to, to solve a problem, right? So that's a you know, pretty interesting technique to, to use. And then you need to know that, and you need to be able to prompt that, right? Yeah. So, you know, uh, it is, it, there is some, something in it, right? That, that if you are able to leverage these tools correctly, you know, the strengths and weaknesses and, and you know, evolve it. Yes, that, that'll just, you know, power you up. Yeah. How often every day do you use ChatGPT or uh, an AI model? Let's just say that. Yeah, I think daily, right? I, I love the voice mode. Uh, yeah. in the, it got just so much better. You can have really fluent conversation with it right now. So what I do when I drive, I just, instead of uh, running an audiobook right now, I open up the conversation mode and yeah. I start a conversation on the different topics, right? 
So yeah, I mean, so you can have a conversation. Hey, I want to lose weight. Okay, give me some tips. <laughs> can you can you create a diet for me, or what's the, my caloric balance? And you can have like an an hour long conversation with an expert that has like you know access to all that knowledge. It's pretty neat, I would say. Yeah, so that's that's what I do. That's my you know recent discovery. I'm just constantly having these conversations. Yeah, I would suggest you listen to more podcasts. Um, <laughs> 